Hello again, I am Blunty. I am currently using the Quest 3 as my VR headset, and I've got it hooked up right now to my PC, my gaming rig, to play Steam VR titles. But there are several ways to just hook it up both wired and wirelessly, just to do regular, you know, PC VR stuff. One of the most popular apps for doing that is called Virtual Desktop. I have been using it for many, 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 many years now. It is not free, but it's about 20 bucks, and it's worth every single dollar. So, of course, one of the things these apps do, beyond, you know, sending back and forth the vision so you can see in VR, is sending tracking data for your controllers and your headset so it can tell where your head is and where your hands are. And in most VR apps, like VR Chat here, for example, it um, emulates sort of a full body experience by doing what they call inverse kinematics. So it tracks where my hands are and just kind of guesses where my arm should be based on that. It is a long way from perfect. For example, it can't tell when I tip my elbow up like this. It has no idea where my elbows are. And uh, if I turn my head, it tends to turn my whole body because it does not have any clue about my head in relation to my shoulders or anything else. But in general... Ow! Okay, I just stubbed my toe. <laughs> I don't normally record VR standing in this spot because of that, but I have to because I need a live camera to show you the differences in, in tracking here. <laughs> Ow. Okay, okay, okay. Right, where was it? Right, right, inverse kinematics. So it's only, it's only tracking my head and my hands and it's doing the guesswork on all the other stuff. And it does that fairly reasonably well. It's mildly convincing, but it does have some immersion limitations. Now, when the Quest 3 was being launched, Meta made a promise that they were going to release a software update that would enable sort of a next level tracking. So instead of just tracking the controllers in the head, uh, they were going to use the cameras on the bottom of the device to track your shoulders and your arms and stuff like that, and use that to figure out uh, you know, your body positioning. And it would also use that as a more sophisticated set of data points to figure out what your legs should be doing. It's not actually tracking the legs with the cameras or anything, Thing. It's just a different kind of inverse kinematics. Now, what has just happened, and the reason for this video is Virtual Desktop have just released a beta that sends that extra inside out upper body tracking stuff from the Quest 3 over to Steam VR. So, I'm going to turn that on for you and show you what the difference is. But first, a few little tests. So, we've seen what happens to the elbows. It has, you know, we get weird, weird little stuff going on when you try and lift your elbows up and stuff like that. Uh, you've seen the head turn how it doesn't follow my body. And if I turn my body and not my head, it gets all kind of weird when I do that as well. And here's one that I find particularly annoying. If I'm, I wanna lean over something, like I'm standing over an edge and I lean over, it has no idea if I'm leaning over, so it tends to step me forward, and sometimes it'll make you fall off a thing, <laughs> off a ledge, when all you're trying to do is look over the edge. Uh, same thing for leaning back, it's got really no idea what's going on with the lean. So, Let's turn on that new system where it sends the upper body tracking stuff from the Quest 3 to SteamVR and see what the difference is. All right, let's do a little quick calibration here. Boop. So what is actually happening here is Virtual Desktop is taking the information from the upper body tracking stuff and presenting it to SteamVR as if it was Vive trackers. It's just pretending to be Vive trackers because SteamVR doesn't know what to do with the data that's coming right from the Quest 3, but it does know exactly what to do with Vive trackers. So now, you might be able to tell already, I'm moving a little bit differently. And if I lift my elbow up, sure enough, my elbows go up. And I can do this. I can put my hands behind my head. And because it knows where my upper body is, even though it can't see the controllers anymore, like the Quest can't see the controllers, it's got no idea where the controllers are, it still doesn't quite rig out. But yeah, once we bring the controllers back into view, it kind of slides pretty gently back into view without snapping or anything. So yeah, I mean, it doesn't quite hang my arms at the side of my body quite correctly. It's not perfect there. How about the lean test? Let's do that. So I'm going to just lean over here. Ooh, look at that. No steppy steppies. I'm going to lean back. Oh, oh crawled my back. <laughs> so there you go. That's all a little more convincing already, isn't it? Now let's to turn my head and look at that. It knows that my shoulders are not going anywhere. So I can finally look around without going eh, eh. like Michael Keaton in the original Batman movie with a big rubber mask where he couldn't turn his head so you're always Batman turning now I can just swing around and that is actually a motion that I tend to do a lot when I'm standing still I just sort of rock back and forth on my feet like this and this looks a lot more natural now than it does uh, with, the, with the standard IK tracking because the standard IK tracking just sort of makes me rock side to side and I take little steppy steps steppy step steppy step but now my little body swing looks pretty much like it should. 
And if you're playing games and things like that that support full body tracking, this is going to have a big knock-on effect because when you, say, reach behind you for a weapon, for example, a lot of games do that, you know, you draw your bow and stuff like that, uh, it usually loses your controller, so it just sort of takes a best guess where your controller is. But now, because it knows where this part of your arm is, it knows where, you, you know, your shoulder is, it can more reliably predict where your hand should be on that kind of motion. Now, like I said, it's still just using IK for the legs. It's a little more sophisticated. So if you sit or squat, it does tend to be a little more natural. I want to do a bit more testing on that. But say, for example, I pull over my real life chair here and uh, just take a seat. Oh, oh, hang on a sec. You guys, you guys come down here with me. There we go. Let's give you a wider view there. So I am sitting on a chair right now and yeah, it doesn't quite get it right. I'm kind of squiddy squatty, but that's still looking a bit better than it normally does. If I oh, grab you and just uh, kneel down on the floor here. Oh, God, my, oh, my back's not doing well. Um, yeah, that's not terribly convincing, is it? My legs have folded behind me. That's the first time I've seen that happen. I've done a little bit of testing with this so far, and usually the legs fold in front of me fairly naturally. But obviously, depending on where it's coming from, let's try that again. We'll squat down. We're doing a little weird snappy snap. Let's sit down on the ground. Nope, it's still doing the weird thing. Okay, that was working kind of all right, but again, not tracking your legs, so lying down and sitting down is still going to look a bit weird, but for a lot of other stuff, with the upper body stuff, it's going to work a lot better. The other thing it doesn't do, of course, is track your waist. So if you want to swing your hips around or, you know, waggle your tail if you're, you're, you're you know, you're in a furry uh, avatar or something, you still can't do that kind of stuff. But at least the little bobby motion you're doing while you're trying to do that still does look a little bit better than the old way. Now, what's going to be really interesting is combining this upper body tracking with physical trackers for the waist and the legs to combine those two things together. Because that could mean you need fewer physical trackers, like Slime VR trackers, for example, which I do have a video coming up on. I do have a review set. I've been trying to put them through their paces, but <laughs> for those of you who have been regulars around here, uh, it's been a bit difficult recently. But that is coming. And I know it's a heavily requested feature already to be able to combine the Quest 3's native inside-out upper body tracking with physical trackers for the lower part of your body. So you get a hybrid system that can turn out to be quite an affordable full body tracking solution. But there you go. Worth having a play around with, absolutely, in my opinion. And I think I'm going to keep using it for at least doing these presentation videos, because when I gesture, the gestures look a little more natural than they do ordinarily. If you do want to give it a go, I'm going to put the links in the doobly-doo. Uh, there'll be a link for the uh, for opting into the beta of the Quest 3 app, and also the beta clients you'll need to direct to download. There'll be a link down there as well. There's really not much to setting up. You install the both beta clients as you normally would. Uh, you have to make sure you go into the settings and turn on the appropriate settings for emulating the Vive trackers and sending the data across to Steam in the first place. There is also an option to emulate the Vive controllers because they have a different style of finger tracking. I turn that off because I can't do certain gestures like this, for example which is gesture I do a lot because I do a two-finger salute <laughs> as a habit in my videos and have done forever, literally, since I've been starting doing videos. I've been saying hello and goodbye with a little two-finger salute. Uh, you can't do that with the Vive Tracker emulation thing for some reason. Um, but yeah, you have a play around with that as well. It's just a little option you can tick on or tick off. Uh, and you might have to actually restart SteamVR for that to actually work because that, that's what I had to do. So there you go. Uh, give it a go. Let me know how you go on. And yes, it is only for Quest 3 because the Quest 2 doesn't do this inside out upper body tracking stuff it just it's the way its cameras work are just not set up for it i'm afraid so you're sol on that one yeah, i hope you found this interesting and or useful i am really quite impressed by how it works i've been waiting and waiting and waiting for this to happen i've been tooling around with this inside out body tracking stuff for a little bit with a couple of shitty apps and shitty native quest 3 apps um, but i've been waiting for this to happen for for, for virtual desktop to uh, enable the function before i started looking at it in videos so thank you to the patrons that's scrolling up above there and uh and yeah, it's uh, pretty damn good.